morning everyone happy new year it's january the third i think tuesday and i just wanted to put up a video i uh, also want to tell y'all i've been trying to put up a video for like a solid week and i kept running into technological difficulties because my phone said it had no more storage which made no sense anyway so today I went to Verizon and we've got it all figured out. So I wanted to put up a video today to show y'all what I've accomplished in the last week over here in the bed off of my driveway. So here we go. Okay, so I've been out here for the past week at least and y'all know I've been trying to design a little cottage area here off of my driveway which is the north side of our house, but it still gets a lot of sun. It gets morning sun from about 8.30 until the sun goes back behind the golf course around probably about three o'clock in the afternoon, the sun gets back behind these pines. So this is, I guess, a part to full sun area. Now y'all remember that we had a mass planting of camellia shishis all in this area. And I took those shishis up. As you can see, I have two potted up right here. There were about nine of them. So I took the shishis up and put them in containers. And you may also remember that over here in front of the concrete planter, we had for Cryptomeria japonica globosas planted in a line behind the gray owl juniper. Well, I took those up too. And immediately I realized that I wanted to put them somewhere where they were more prominent because they're such a special plant and you don't see them everywhere. At least I don't. So let me show you. So I've had this one for about two years and they're slow growers, but this one has actually put on a good bit of new growth uh, and a good bit of growth over, over the past couple of years that I've had it. So these will get pretty big, probably about four feet tall and wide. Right now, I would say this is probably about two and a half feet tall, maybe three, maybe three feet wide at this point. So I've actually seen some here that are full, fully grown. And I mean, it might even be that they get more towards the five feet, four feet tall, about five feet wide mark. But anyway, this is gonna end up being my anchor for this bed, these cryptomeria. So I have one here in the middle, right in front of my blood good Japanese maple. That's still pretty small, but it will eventually get big and will be the focal point of the bed. But I've got cryptomeria, 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 and a cryptomeria back here behind directly behind the blood good you remember i had the hedge of grass there were about six grasses lining this entire front of the bed here and i took up the grass rearranged it so that it would be interesting but not a hedge i put in some boxwoods as you can see all throughout this bed. I think it's nice to have that contrast between the distillium, which is sort of more free flowing, but a wonderful evergreen, and the structure of these boxwoods here. I thought that was a good, a good look. That distillium right here, I also got it for 50% off. It was so root bound, it took me forever, but I, I took a serrated knife and I sawed off the bottom of the root ball and kind of messed the root ball up a little bit and put it in the ground. And I mean, I think it looks great. And my 
favorite part about it is all that moss. Check it out. It took me a few weeks at least of looking at the bed and realizing what I need in this bed is some color. I mean, and what I mean by that is something bright. I love green on green. I love playing with evergreens and with textures as I know many of you guys do too. But I didn't have anything that kind of drew your eye. You know what I mean? Um, I needed to have something that was a little brighter. And so what I did was I added in non radiance abelia. So the radiance abelia is so stunning and it looks a whole lot like a Miss Lemon or a Twist of Lime Abelia. It's got the cream margins and the center of the leaf is green. And in the spring and summer, it gets white little trumpet blooms, which I think are so cute on it. Now, the Radiance Abelia is gonna get, let's see. All right, it says, 36 inches tall and wide, but I have a feeling that it could get bigger than that. And so I had two gift cards and um, I went out there to Buds and Blossoms and I bought like nine of these abelia. And as soon as I put them in the bed, it was just like, you know, you just know it's right. I just go with what I know and I absolutely love abelia. I think it's just the most fun plant to put into a bed when you have like a lot of green because immediately like your eye is just drawn to it. I put in several like right here and here and then throughout the bed. I just, in my opinion, even a cottage bed needs some consistency and like some repetition so that your eye can rest on it because if you have a bed that's just full of a lot of things that don't make sense and don't have cohesion it's not going to look as good so these hollies are the biggest plants in the garden all along the back and they're going to give me that really pretty sort of wall of evergreen interest and a lot of green and I'll keep them in cone shapes they'll probably I could they could maybe get up to 12 or 13 feet tall and I may keep them like just in a loose cone some of these I got at a big discount because they didn't look so great but I didn't mind that because I can fertilize them in the spring and they'll come they'll really do some something good some of these are robin hollies and some of these are oak oak leaf hollies and they're just a mix and so i did that and i put in this pineapple guava right here it's going to get a pretty good bit of sun right here and i love it and see it's also got like that silver color that the gray owl juniper has. So like Linda Vodder talks about color echoes a lot. And that's kind of what I'm saying is important is like, I don't want to have too much in here. I want there to be like kind of some cohesion. All right. So knockout roses are here bubblegum pink and then knockout roses are over here too on the side uh, on the back side of this cherry laurel tree 
in the pot there is a Sonic Bloom Wajila that I ordered online last year. And it almost died. But it is going to bloom like bubblegum pink. And I think it's going to get about five feet tall and wide. Okay. I was so pumped about this, y'all. So I went out to Buds and Blossoms the other day and I looked in that 50% off section and I found some Checkmark Trilogy Wajilas. I was so excited because you don't, I just don't see Wajila around here because we're actually in like the border cutoff of the hardiness zone for it. I think it's like zone four through eight and I'm 8B. So it's kind of a push to have them here, but I'm going to try them out and I really hope they do great. They have like multiple color blooms all on one plant, white and a bunch of different shades of pink is what it looked like on the tag. So I have them planted here in front of the cherry laurel. And then I'm thinking about putting my Sonic Bloom somewhere, but I just got to find a spot for it. I'm kind of running out of room. And then over here I have three White Wedding Hydrangeas. Yeah, it's, wait, okay. One, two, three White Wedding Hydrangeas. Back here is a, I think it is a Quick Fire Hydrangea and I have two more Quick Fires that I'm gonna plant somewhere around here. Maybe like right there in front of those hollies in that little spot. Okay, look, look at Carl. He looks like he's really happy in his new home. And this guy has been such a trooper because I've moved him so much, but I really believe this is going to be his forever spot. Kind of in the backdrop of this garden. Now, let me tell y'all what happened yesterday about these heuchera. I mean, I cannot even tell y'all how excited I was because we went and ate lunch. And then when we left the restaurant, I was like, hey, so what do you think about taking me by Carol's Nursery? Which was probably about a 10 minute drive away. So Ryan was like, yeah, sure, why not? He was just going to sit in the car. And I was just going to walk in and not really expect to see much, but just kind of go and scope things out. Well, so we got there, parked. I was just kind of like walking around and there seemed to not be a whole lot of stock. And um, then lo and behold, I saw a table with a bunch of heuchera and I hightailed it back to the car. I mean, I was so excited. It was like Christmas morning. I grabbed my purse. I told Ryan, they have a ton of heuchera. And ended up just getting a load of it. So let me show y'all. I was, I just was so pumped because they had, th they had some that I did not have and had not seen here before. Look at this. This is heuchera red fury. Oh my gosh. Look, okay, it is, that's the color. Okay, so this heuchera needs about four to six hours of sun daily, six inches tall, 12 inches wide, zones five through 11. Okay, so pretty. I mean, what a pop. Okay, and then this little thing is a lure lime, which I have some lure lime, but they don't look like this. They're just, they look like that is what they look like. Um, but look, I like was beside myself when I saw this plant. Look at all the different color all on this one plant. 
I mean, I was just like freaking out, y'all. And so I got like four of these. And then also look at this. Okay. If you don't know heuchera, you need to know heuchera. It is the best plant. It is, it works in, okay, this one gets bigger. It's 10 to 12 inches tall and 14 to 16 inches wide. Oh my gosh. And it's called a carnival cocoa mint. So I did not have one of these. So the thing about heuchera that I love is here at least they don't i don't think die back all the way to the ground in the winter time they can they can handle some cold they do good in you know four to six hours of sun a day and they can also take shade um, a lot of them can take some shade they have multiple colors on each plant as you can see here and then something else that i've talked about is that I love also the undersides of the leaves and I'll show y'all that on another one. And they are mostly for their foliage, but they do send up like, sort of like hostas. They send up stalks with some blooms, but I get them for their foliage. Okay, now this is like maybe my favorite one that i've had underneath the wild cherry tree and i bought a bunch of it because of how much i love it but it is called a peach parfait and it is sort of like a hot pink color and i love hot pink anything but when the sun hits it just right it looks like it's hot pink and so you see how the leaf, it looks like a peach here, but look at the underside of the leaf. It is hot pink. Have you ever seen anything so cool? Oh my gosh. All right, this one gets, I believe six, nope, 10 to 12 inches tall, 14 to 16 inches wide, four to six hours sun, zone four to nine. All right, so they just end up being like these beautiful mounds of colorful foliage and a really good ground cover plant. I believe this is the Carnival Cocoa Mint. Yeah, Carnival Cocoa Mint. I got three of those, about five, six of the peach parfaits. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, okay. And then let's go back over here. So as y'all can see, I kind of loaded up on the heuchera, but it's because it's going to be the show, show plant in this bed. Everything I have in here is green or variegated. Um, <clears throat> I do have a lot of color and bloom in this bed, mostly white and pinks. And just look at that all right these are this one is a a carnival rose granita granita how to, however you say that and it is really pretty it's got more veining on the leaf than the red fury does but they've got kind of a similar look this one also gets 10 to 12 and 14 to 16, tall and wide. Some more Lord Lime, some more Red Fury. Oh my gosh. I hope y'all love these as much as I do. I mean, they excite me so much. All right. Now, over here on this side, I have three Francis Mason Abelia planted around the tree. They don't look great right now, but they'll start putting out some really bright chartreuse leaves in the spring and summer. And then over here, I had kind of thought about just doing like a planting of Encore Azaleas. I've got mostly the Bubblegum Pink Autumn Carnation but then there's another one in there that is a wild card and I can't remember which one it is, but they all have shades of pink blooms. 
So there you have it. I have some white blooming hydrangeas, some pink wajila, some white and pink multicolored wajila, pink azaleas, the chartreuse color of the radiance of Belia with lots of fun texture. So I hope y'all enjoyed this update and I'm sorry I didn't get any videos in process of me planting this bed. I really wanted to, but like I said, it was just my phone kept on messing up on me. So I decided today I would just give y'all an update starting where we're at now. But I hope you guys had a good holiday and are having a good new year. And I will see y'all in the next one.